above the clouds, high in the Himalayas, the old Silk Road climbs through 14,000 feet to the Natula Pass, where two immense nations meet. It's here that India comes face to face with China. 40 years ago, they fought a fierce frontier war. Now, finally, the border is reopening for trade. Symbol of epic change in both countries as they dash for growth and new riches. India and China together will shape much of this century for all of us. But who will be the winners and losers as they race each other to the top of the world? I'm setting off on a journey through China and India to watch the race unfold. First Shanghai and the Chinese sprint from the very start. Welcome to take our mega train. The airport train pushes through 430 kilometers per hour, 270 miles per hour, for a mere eight minute journey. Impressive, undoubtedly. Vitally needed, hardly. But this train is a political statement. Be amazed, be very amazed by China's rise. Once China decided it wanted the fastest train in the world, there didn't need to be any public discussion. This isn't a democracy. In a one-party state, what the government wants, the government gets. The train seems to shout to the world, we're overtaking you all. Arriving in India is a very different story. This doesn't immediately look like a country on a dash for growth. A taxi in Mumbai, the country's commercial capital, gives me far too much time for a close-up view of slums and jams. Most of India's roads are hopelessly inadequate, part of a lousy infrastructure. But what's holding India back? Partly it's the need to persuade people in overcrowded areas like this to move out of the path of modernization. They can't be forced out of the way. It's called democracy. But how does it look to those creating the Hi. new wealth? Hi. Nice to meet you. What do you think would suit me? Um, I can do all kinds of shoes. I like these ones. These yeah. are really smart. Mm. In Shanghai, Billy Wang's handmade shoes tell a powerful tale. <laughs> Billy took me to his small factory, a tiny but thriving part of China's manufacturing boom. <laughs> His workers copy from photos their customers' favorite shoes. It's all imitation, not innovation. The business is expanding very fast, like all Chinese manufacturing, and Mr. Wang certainly doesn't question China's system, which helps make him rich. I'm just a shoemaker. I just worry about my shoes. Nothing else matters to me. I just want to make good shoes. How much does your business and your future success depend on China's government? According to the Chinese way of thinking, the political system is decisive. Everything else comes second to this. And that's the message big picture China tells you too. In the new Shanghai, with its soaring temples of capitalism, the fast track to wealth has been produced by a rigid political system, communist in name only now. Shanghai's international port is part of national success built on an unwritten deal. Business stays out of politics, especially when the political system delivers so much. The port director told me he's immensely proud of what's been achieved. This area is for refrigerated containers. Over there, those are for hazardous materials. Most of these are for normal dry goods. This whole port was built in 1990. Every year, we're growing by 25%. More than that, it's largely one-way traffic here. China doesn't buy much overseas, but produces vast quantities of goods for sale. China's achievement is simply staggering single-minded, one-party government making clear decisions which mean that China dominates the export world. It's staggering to watch this. Containers coming on and off ships simultaneously, most of them coming into China empty, most of them going out crammed with Chinese exports. 
This isn't something that should worry just India. It worries economies across the world. A huge trade imbalance. Basically, we have a lot of uh, construction going on right now just before the monsoons. But in India, young risk takers are not dismayed by China's success. The story of Tarun Tadani in Mumbai is typical. All our designs are basically finalized. Tarun is a man in a hurry to share in India's consumer boom happening now. Tarun, still only 22, cut short studies in America to create this fashion accessories business. And the emphasis here in his design room, unlike China, is on innovation, not imitation. Next door in the workshop, a small team churns out low-cost fashion accessories for eager buyers among India's spreading middle class. Tarun insists India's cheap labor combined with superior design skills make a winning formula. We, we never copy directly. We spend so much time, so much, I mean, consistently trying to make new products, you know, new designs, new things out there, finding new trends, you know, just keep developing in new, new styles. So is this an exciting time to doing business in India? It's an exciting time because you can see things happening, you know. India is moving very fast, but it's like, it's like a boat. But if we don't, if we can sail or we can even sink. I can't speak for the future, but I can definitely say it is, it is definitely bright. It's a, it's a good path and I think we are, we are on the right track. And big picture India? Well, that stress on skills drives heavy industry too. Here at Mukan Steel, they can't compete with China's bulk bog standard production. Instead, they make only high value specialist steels meeting Europe's most exacting standards. I'll tell you, life does not get hotter than this. At the heart of a steelworks in India, midsummer, it's almost unbearable. But the Indians are justifiably proud of what they're doing here, not just competing with huge producers like China with a massive output of bulk commodity steel, but here making some of the world's finest high-grade steel competing with anything that could be produced in other parts of the industrialized world. Most of this steel meets India's enormous demands, but also goes for export. This is an area of heavy industry where India sees opportunities for massive growth over the next 10 or 15 years, and where the Indians are convinced they have a huge edge over China. Outside, away from the intense heat, I hear some fighting talk from the marketing director, India can catch up and then overtake China. And I don't think China can sustain this kind of high growth rate here for next three to five years. Is India While going India's uh, growth rate for last uh, year was 8.5% GDP, the current year has begun with 9.5% in first two months. And I think as we go along, we see acceleration of the growth rate as all the industry segments are... Gna and fighting poverty means giving children skills which could lift them to jobs inside India's urban-led boom, an escape route from very low wages working the land. What would you spend it on? As it is, the headmaster sometimes despairs at the risk of perpetual poverty here. Because uh, uneducated ch parents, uh, they are not sending their children uh, properly to the school. Uh, uh, absent is uh, their uh, children uh, absent is uh, one they are. Uh, at least continually, continuously, nearly 10 to 15 days they are absenting. By that way, we will not understand lessons properly. But if they get better educated, will that give them a different chance in life than their parents? I mean, is the future for them better? Definitely, sir. Definitely. Now look at this. Still India, but the contrast could hardly be more extreme. This is the breath-catching campus in Bangalore of Infosys, India's own homegrown software giant, and a major contributor to India's explosive growth. We have a faculty of 180 people who are faculties in computer science. This is possibly the largest computer science faculty anywhere in the world. Mohandas Pai, Infosys director, is showing me a vision of India's future. And the biggest emphasis of all here, no question, it's on teaching. Taking the highest achievers among India's college leavers to even greater heights. They see no limits to the country's future or their own. I want to leave a mark. I'm looking at making a difference somewhere down the line. 
it's not like everything is already done. So there is there's so much that's yet to be discovered, there's yet to be tapped. So that way, there's, there's a lot of scope to make a difference. Is this an exciting